Good evening and welcome to the second round of the 85th Annual National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, the NAIA National Tournament from Georgetown's historic and venerable Davis Reed Alumni Gym on the campus of Georgetown College. It is only a second round, but the early indication of the atmosphere here in this arena, it's going to be a final four feel to it. Georgetown, Indiana Wesleyan. The action is about five and a half minutes away from getting underway here, and it's just the second round. Good evening, Darren and LC here. Call you the game tonight, and LC, I tell you what, walking in to the arena now, not, not just the gym, but you walk onto campus and you immediately felt the excitement and the intensity. Both these teams have been out here on a couple of different occasions. Georgetown just now coming back out on the floor. But this thing is going to be a heck of a basketball game between the three-seeded Tigers in the Dewar bracket against the six-seeded Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan. This is going to be fun. They Indiana Wesleyan was Division II of NAI until this year or last year when they combined the two divisions just went one NAI level. They have three national championships as a Division II NAI's uh, school. Georgetown has three also as a Division I NAIA member. Tonight, they clash here in Georgetown. And by every indication of the games last night, this one is going to be fun. It's going to be a dogfight. I'm excited. We saw the Tigers take care of business last night against Lords. And barring a second-half comeback from Lords, they were able to hold them off. And they're going to need to play much better throughout the entirety of the game if they're going to get the victory tonight. Well, Indiana Wesleyan led pretty much throughout their game with Mid-American Nazarene University out of Olathe, Kansas. Uh, but it was a game really where IWU got off to a fast start uh, and really just basically got their tempo and controlled it for the final 30 minutes or so. Uh, a couple of runs by MNU got back into it, but they were just never really able to get over that hump uh, to even take the lead on IWU. But uh, it is very interesting how those two games mirrored each other to a point. Uh, and if you're coming to this game tonight, if you're listening to our voices right now and watching us on your, uh, whether it be your TV, your computer, your iPhone, your iPad, or if you're like my buddy down in Fort Worth, or excuse me, San Antonio. I moved him, but he didn't know that. Kevin, I didn't know you moved. He's in San Antonio, but he, he's gotten in trouble with his wife again, as usual, and he's in his man cave. <laughs> uh, I don't know how they're still married, to be honest with you, but we are going to have a field. Here comes IWU on to the field, and they, uh, to the court here. And they'll see they've got a pretty good contingent of fans in this arena. They so do. it's going to be nice. And this, this is going to be a very... Very entertaining game. If you like teams that will get it up and down the floor, and you like a high wire act, this is your place to be. Both teams have really good athletes. And right off the bat, Indiana Wesley and rocking the red and black uniform. I'm a big fan of this color combination. Uh, and for those that know LC, you understand why. Go uh, cards, I, baby. That's what I do. He's coming out. I know it's coming out. But uh, I will tell you this. I mean, folks. There's not many seats right now left in this gymnasium here. And it's so going up you, quick. Yeah, if you are planning on coming, you better get here. Because if you don't, you're going to be left out. But you can join us here on YouTube. And we invite you to join us on YouTube. Uh, so it'll be really good. Uh, Indiana Wesleyan last night uh, uh, knocked off uh, Mid-American Nazarene in the 6-11 game and really – Indiana Wesleyan uh, established their game, not with their big man, Seth Maxwell, the big seven-footer, the senior, out of uh, Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. And he's not hard to miss, is no, he? No, he's not hard to find at all, number 42 in red. So, you know, he's one of those guys that can dictate what happens in the lane. However, 
it was his the guard, uh, a fellow senior, Spencer Piercefield, who got IWU rolling. He hit three threes in the first half and really uh, got MNU out of that slough off defense that they were trying to surround Maxwell with. So, uh, and then they really got a, a good game off the bench, did Indiana Wesleyan from Tim Adetukose. And I know I probably got his name wrong, but uh, again, I'm working. He's a 6'6 junior from Essex, London, England. And if anybody knows about Essex, it's, got, it's a pretty good athletic area of England. So uh, he uh, gave him a, a, a big lift off the bench. And, uh, you know, Georgetown's going to have to to shut down uh, a, a really good shooting IWU team. And we'll see if Georgetown can keep up uh, that defensive intensity they had in the first half against Lords. And IWU is going to give a little – uh, different look every time down defensively. They play a man-to-man. Sometimes it's that ball line defense. Sometimes it's more of a denial, depending on who's on the floor, on their opponents. Uh, and sometimes they play matchup zone. So it's going to be up to uh, Jack Play Wells and the point guards for Georgetown to figure it out. And in the meantime, the guards for IWU have to handle the pressure from the guards from Georgetown. So it's going to be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There you go. So both teams look like they're ready physically. If, if you can tell by body language and facial expressions, both teams are ready. The only question is now both teams, which one will execute better than the other one? And we'll see when it comes. Getting ready to have the national anthem here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym on the NAI Basketball National Tournament. Our national anthem, and we're getting ready for the starting lineups tonight. And it'll be uh, Indiana Wesleyan, the visiting team on the scoreboard, the lower seed of the two. Of course, they are the sixth seed, knocked off 11th seed again, Mid American Nazarene. We expect them to start. It'll be Spencer Piercefield, who we expect, the six-foot senior out of Greenwood, Indiana, Center Grove High School, averaging 12.7 points per ball game. Noah Smith, the red shirt six, uh, senior, six-foot tall, averaging 9.6 out of Indianapolis, Indiana, Hamilton Southeastern High School. And we're getting Griffin Cleveland, 6'3 sophomore, Lee's Summit, Missouri, Summit Christian. And then we're getting Javon Buchanan, a 6'7 freshman out of Lafayette, Indiana, Lafayette Jefferson High School. And the big man in the middle, Seth Maxwell, seven footer, a grad student out of Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. The Hill School is his high school. Maxwell averaging 15.8, Buchanan averaging 12.2, Cleaver 
averaging 13.6. And now for Georgetown College, we expect them to start this way, the way they've started pretty much all year long. It'll be Cam Brooks here, six foot seven junior, out of Zanesville, Ohio, Zanesville High School, 11.8 points per ball game. A six one senior, Jake Omer, number two in white, from Taylor Mill, Kentucky, Scott High School, averaging 16.4. We get a 6'5 freshman, Tay Dozier, out of Louisville, Kentucky's Butler High School, averaging 10.2 points per ball game. Jaquay Wells, 5'11 junior, out of Louisville, Kentucky, also out of Butler High School, averaging 7.1. And tonight we're getting Kyron Jones starting instead of. Tay Dozier's not starting. Not starting for Tay. They're going to keep just so. Coach Chris Briggs pulled one on me, didn't he? But Kyron Jones, a 6'5 junior out of Bowling Green High School in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And then Drew Lamont, the 6'8 senior out of Broward, Florida, an American Heritage High School. And look at this atmosphere. The football team already getting involved early. It is a really nice atmosphere, and we got people still coming in. Uh, but if you wait too long, there's not going to be any spots. Jim seats about 1,175. I have heard that after this game tonight, this will be the last basketball game officially played here for the year, but it will be the last, at, when this season is done in the spring, uh, it's going to be a renovation time, isn't it? That's what I've heard. Ho I hope so. I hope that's the case. I've been hearing that. For five years. I've been hearing it for 10. And have an early no clock. Whistle. Yeah, no clock. The clock was not running. So we're getting the shot clock arranged, but the game clock hadn't started. The shot clock started, but not the game clock, which was weird. You usually see the game clock run, the shot clocks don't run. And it wouldn't be any IA basketball if we didn't have something goofy happen. <laughs> and if you're the Wildcats, you're going to want to go to your big guy, your seven-footer, get him involved nice and early in this game. That took him to the second half to really get going. He had six in the first half last night. He finished with 16. This is Smith. Guarded by Brooks Harris. As George down to their customary man-to-man. -man. Down on the block, it goes to Maxwell. Working on Lamont. Can't get free. To Cleaver on the break. Now to Smith. Three left wing. Short. Rebound by Maxwell and a foul. Oh, wow. Maxwell with one hand just puts yeah. it right back up. Well, and I tell you what, I don't. That's a tough call on Lamont. He was doing everything to get him off the, off the, the, the block. However... Maxwell caught the ball, and they're going to give him the and one. I thought he caught the ball, and that's when the foul was. But the official disagrees, and it's 2 nothing IWU. That's going to be a tough assignment for Lamont. Yes, it will. Maxwell misses the free throw, rebounded into the hands of Wells, and here come the Tigers on their first position. 30 seconds in, it's 2 nothing Wildcats. This is Omer. Gets around, 17-footer, got it. Jake Omer, right off the bat. If you're IWU, you don't see, do not want to see number two in white hit his first couple of shots because then he has a history of the first two go in, he goes for big, big numbers. He's a volume shooter. You're absolutely right. Maxwell loses it. Cleaver picks it up. Goes to Buchanan on the baseline. Cut off by Lamont. Straight away to Smith. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Wells looking for a screen. They jump, Smith goes right, goes layup, and took a trip all the way around and dropped. And that was a little too easy. Somebody's got to step in front and make that a more difficult shot. Well, he was looking for somebody in white to come flying at him, and they didn't. Wells tried to jump the pick, and it got him in trouble. Here's three from Omer, no good. Lamont had it. He should have grabbed it. Here comes Cleaver. Working on Brooks Harris. Back out to Maxwell. Buchanan will shoot it for three and got it. And a little miscommunication there. Nobody picked him up. Well, IWU off to a good start. Buchanan had a bad game last night scoring and didn't play much. He was, looked like he was uh, struggling to find his, his, his rhythm last night. But Buchanan looking to bounce back here early. Here's Lamont. Step back, 15-footer. No. Rebound to Cleaver. 
It was a good jab step to free up some space for Lamont. Not able to see it fall down. Lamont getting physical with Maxwell and a foul on Lamont. That's the second on Lamont, the second on the Tigers. And up off the bench comes Rashad Bishop, the six, seven freshman. And Rashad Bishop wants this matchup against this seven footer. He can elevate and get to his area above the rim. And we have a what? 21 on the shot, 21 on the shot clock. Couldn't figure out what the whistle was sounding from the official. 7-2, IWU, boy, they missed Piercefield. Back to Smith in the corner, guarded by Brooks Harris. They give it to Smith, drives baseline, gives it back to Buchanan, lays it up, no. Rebound tipped out, Wells has it for Georgetown. Right side, it goes to Jones, back out to Wells. Got him down on the block. Drives, cut off, double team. Gets it over to Bishop. Bishop takes it in the middle. Jump hook, count it, and a foul. What a tough finish. Rashad Bishop. Not a, not a pretty shot by Bishop. But it goes in. They cut the foul on the seven-footer, Maxwell. His first, team's first. Bishop in the line to try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play, and does. The friendly roll. 7-5, IWU, two minutes, 45 seconds in. Glad you're with us here on YouTube for the NAI National Championship Boys or Men's Tournament. Maxwell on Bishop. Now to Piercefield. Piercefield to Buchanan, three straight away, got it. And that's twice now that Buchanan has had wide open looks beyond the three-point line. He Tigers has got to step up. He has six, it's 10-5. They call it a three. In the corner to Brooks Harris for three to answer, and he does. A beautiful find by Jaquay Wells below the rim. Great shot by Cam Brooks Harris. Clewer goes down the baseline, reverse, no good. Harris with the rebound. Sometimes I'll call him Brooks Harris, sometimes I'll call him Harris. It's just easier to say. Jones on Maxwell, and that's two. The Tigers attacking the rim ferociously right now. Well, <clears throat> the way to negate size is when you go to the rim as an offensive player, you don't head fake and then fall away. That, that helps the size there. You go through his chin, and I'm not talking dirty. You have to go through the chin, and that takes away his length as Jones misses the first. Jones, for a while there, had gotten rid of that hitch at the top of his, his release on free throws. But all of a sudden, it's back. Oh. Well, I tell you what, Bishop was about ready to go inside, but I looked like, it looked like Stauffer kind of goaded him into stepping in the lane. I think so. Heady play by Stauffer. 10-8. IWU, 16-27 to play in the opening half here. Piercefield working against Wells. Now gets it across to Buchanan. And now Wells will pick him up in the half court. They give it to Buchanan on the left side. Back to Smith to stop for straight away. Piercefield has it. Tries to shoot over. No good. Rebound tipped into the hands of Jones. It's going to be tough run. to shoot over him. Yeah. Wells down the lane. Had it knocked away. Gets it back. And a foul on Cleaver. Reaching in. And that was one of those that loose ball and Cleaver just happened to be in the wrong spot at the wrong time. When you when you have a loose ball, you're reaching for it. Both players are reaching for it. Cleaver was just a little bit out of position. Third on IWU. And they go down low to Bishop for the flush. Great find inside by CBH. And a great catch by Bishop. I think that was... Buchanan was all draped on the Bishop. This is Smith. We're tied at 10. Rashad with authority. Buchanan for three. No. Rebounded by CBH. Here's Omer. Good matchup here. Omer being guarded by Smith. Brooks Harris for two. A long two. Woo! And Cam's feeling it right now. It's 12-10. Tigers with 15-22 to go. And IWU calls timeout. 
Both these coaches last night in their respective opening round games, LC, had no qualms about calling timeouts early to stop other opponents' runs. So this is going to be really fun to watch. Uh, both teams want to get up and down. Georgetown wants to run more than IWU. Georgetown's kind of a helter-skelter type style. IWU will, is more of a controlled fast break group. And but, the, the timeout game is all about momentum, right? Georgetown's winning the momentum battle right now, and IWU wants to slow it down a little bit. And IWU had the momentum early uh, based on a couple of three-point makes by Buchanan. Here in the first four minutes and 39 seconds of this game, LC, I point out that Spencer Piercefield hasn't even got a look at the basket, let alone a, been able to uncork the, a jump shot yet. He is their deadly three-point guy. How he goes, so goes this Wildcat team as far as leadership. Yeah, and he's their second leading scorer. They're going to need him to step up and hit some big shots. He and Noah Smith, number 20 in red. They both, Piercefield 13, they both, they have the moxie of being two seniors. <coughs> Buchanan, out of Smith on the left side. Smith around the corner, drives down over Omer, no. And Adam Dukuse could not keep it in bounds, and Georgetown will have it. Leading 12 10. Two of the winningest programs you'll find in NAI history. Most of IWUs came at the Division II level, but that's okay. Omer on the curl, left hand layup, got it. The scoop layup by Jake Omer. Great finish. Four for Jake. 14-10 Tigers. Smith with it to Buchanan. Now to Adekuse. Working on Bishop. Right wing now to Smith. As they get it on the block there to Buchanan. Step back. Brooks Harris got a piece of it. Omer claims the rebound. Brooks Harris, step back three, left wing, not a good shot for Georgetown. You can get that anywhere in the, in the shot clock. That's what this game will do to you, too, though. You get enough adrenaline pumping. Here's Adekuse for three. Got it. Adekuse knocks it down. Too much space. Adekuse. 14-13, Tigers. Been high paced here. Brooks Harris with it now. This is a good, fun matchup to watch, too. Adekuse against Brooks Harris. Adekuse looks like he'd be a tight end on a football team, doesn't he? He sure does. I'd kill for about a four on the shot clock. Wells, floater from 15, hit it. Jaquay looked like he had to force that one, but beautiful floater nonetheless. He, that was a shot clock hurry shot. Adekuse between, and a foul coming up on Cam Brooks Harris. The Tigers wanted to travel, but I think that's a good foul. Uh, it, was a, it was a foul on Harris, but here's what I, what drives me insane as a broadcaster and as a fan. You watch, both players have their hands straight up. The contact's created by the offensive player. That's what drives me crazy because I don't know how players figure out what the officials are calling because it goes one way one time, the next time you call it a different way. So as a, as a player in today's game, I have no clue how's it going. And now we're getting a stoppage as Debrion Spikes will come in, replacing Jake Omer. Just a quick break with 13.20 to play in the first half. 16-13, IWU. Trails by three. They have the ball. Here's a three on the way from Cleaver. No good. Rebound backside by Spikes. He had a look at it, and it looked right off his hand immediately. Here's Wales, who gets a screen from Jones. Nice job by Piercefield. Now the spikes in the lane. No look pass to Bishop. Woo! Two hand flush. Rashad Bishop, the high flyer. He does it again. Seven for Bishop. 18 13. Here's Piercefield. Boy, Wells has been in his shirt collar. Smith working on spikes. In the lane to Piercefield. Clear will. Clear will. Can't get it off. Added to Gase. Five seconds. Down low to him and lays it in. Nice patience by the Wildcats. 
Lee Work with his first two. 18-15, Maxwell gonna come back in with those two fouls. Jones from 17, got it. Woo. The unorthodox jumper, but gets it to go. If he hits that shot all night, Georgetown will be tough. The thing is, IWU would want him to take that shot pretty much all night. Cleaver, back to Piercefield. Now to Cleaver. Piercefield, long three straight away. Back rim, no. Spikes claims the rebound. Spikes. Pick and roll to Jones. Looking at Stauffer. Back to Spikes. Deep three straight away. Back rim, no. Nice rebound by Jones in the lane. Cut off. Is it the Bishop? Bishop can't get his shot. Throws it out here. Down low to Spikes. Now to Wales. Good ball movement, but good job defensively by IWU to cover. Smith on a mismatch against Jones. And Kyron Jones had enough. Takes it straight to the rack. He's got a mismatch contact. against a smaller player and took him to the rim. 22-15 Georgetown. 11-10 to play in the first half. Piercefield. To Stauffer. To Smith. Smith in the lane over Jones. High archer, no good. Rebounded by Bishop. Great defense without fouling by Kyron Jones. To Wells. Back to Jones. Three straight away. No. Good job of blocking out by Stauffer, and the ball hits the floor. You know you're doing a great job blocking out when the ball hits the floor. The problem is that's not Kyron Jones' shot. Here's Piercefield. Around the pick. Now to Stauffer. Three left wing. Got it. Let's it fly. No hesitation. Indiana Wesleyan. 22-18. Tigers by four. You got a whole passel of players waiting at the scores table. Three for IWU, two for the Tigers. Well, <clears throat> Spikes to Brooks Harris. Step back three. Off. Chased down by Jones, though. A new shot clock at 20. <clears throat> Jones in the left corner. Back to Spikes. Spikes. They got a mismatch again down there with Jones, but couldn't get to him. Wells in the lane. Back to CBH. Three on the way. Got it. Woo! A beautiful, speedy dish by Jaquay Wells, and Cam strokes it away. Both these teams don't like to use a lot of the shot clock, but they have here in the first half. 25-18. Added to Kasi. Around to Piercefield. To Clearwell. Now to Smith. Stauffer in the corner, back to Smith. Spikes up on him, down the lane, floater, got it. Tough floater by Spikes. Smith with four, 25-20. The sauna is rocking, and it is hot, so it's living up to his name. Wells gets it back on the handoff from Brooks Harris. Now to Bishop. Bishop rises up 18-footer, way off. Spikes had it, knocked away from him by Smith, but oh boy, IWU caught a break there. Smith saves it back in. Unfortunately for him, he saved it back into Spikes. And Spikes would have had a layup. The only break for IWU was he was standing on the end line. <laughs> timeout on the floor, a media timeout here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym in Georgetown. We've got a good one brewing. 8.57 to play, 25 20. Tigers on the. Well, back up in Marion, Indiana, we have a listener telling me the proper pronunciation of her grandson. I'm going to get it right, I promise. If I screw it up during this game a couple more times, please forgive me. But it's Griffin Cleaver. Cleaver. 
I'm trying to listen to the PA announcer, but we can't hear him in here so loud. So I apologize. Seth Johnson into the game for the Tigers. And Jake Omer back in. Maxwell back in, along with, well, IWU made a couple of changes, but nobody in there is a turnover. This is Cleaver. Right baseline, penetrates. Pass all the way to the corner to Stauffer, good. And that's a textbook skip bounce pass below the basket. Ten years ago, you never saw that along the baseline, making that pass like that. That was beautiful. 25-23, 20 seconds on the shot clock as Georgetown comes in front court. Omer around out of Kese and does not get it to fall. It rimmed around and came out. And Omer will go to the line for two. That's the first foul we've had in a while on either side. We had a bunch of a flurry early on, and since then it's just kind of settled down. The foul was on Tim Adetukese, and that was his first, the team's fourth. Omer at the line for two. He hits the first. Omer is the best free throw shooter percentage-wise for the Tigers at 78%. He misses the second, of course, I jinxed him. You jinxed him. Spikes and Johnson were both kind of standing back there. They, they had, if they were on their toes, they could have had an offensive rebound on a missed free throw. But Pierce field out, ran both of them. Here's Stauffer. Out deep to Pierce field. He has Johnson on him, down the lane, floater from 12. Back rim, no, Maxwell grabs the rebound to add it to Gixay. Has it blocked by Bishop. Back to Cleaver, down the lane, has it blocked by Jones. Back to Adam Crease, and they're gonna go under 10 on the shot clock. Piercefield with a deep three, no. Jones with a rebound. Great defense by the Tigers in that possession. Jones has Bishop on his left, but decides he's not Chris Coffey to make a pass. Brings it out and gives the spikes. Omer, down the lane, loses it. And then Maxwell, for some reason, tries to grab the ball after Omer just lost it and dribble it on the inline, so gives it back to the Tigers, who would have had a turnover on them, LC. Just a, a mental lapse there by Maxwell. Yep, a break for the Tigers. They give it in to Bishop in the right corner. Now to Spikes, who gives to Omer. Omer, no look to Bishop, here he goes! And a third foul coming up on Maxwell. And that was gonna be a scary poster by Bishop. Yeah, and then, now Maxwell, Disrupted the shot. Now Bishop's got to earn the two from the foul line. That's the positive for IWU. However, the negative is, is the seven-footer just picked up his third. And he's a big focal point for this yeah. offense. Bishop at the line for two. Did he miss the first? He did, and there goes the seven-footer to yeah, the bench. I was looking at Cleaver goes out along with Maxwell. And Maxwell, being a grad student, has to understand, hey, I'm important inside to my, my team, so I have to stay on the floor as much as I can. I, I can't give up that, you know, that third foul. I, it turns out good as Brooks Harris didn't get the rebound. He did hit the first, didn't he? Eight for Bishop. Added to Gusses. Sloppy turnover. Deflected by Bishop. No look pass. Now the Johnson left hand layup good. Twenty. I know he missed both of them. Twenty eight, twenty three. They keep changing the score on me here. This is Smith gets a screen from Buchanan. Under seven to play in the first half, and what has been an entertaining twenty minutes. Buchanan back rim, no, and it hits the brace above. Buchanan being more aggressive offensively right now tonight. Last night, looked like he made it, it didn't feel comfortable in the game last night. I don't know if it was just he wasn't feeling it physically or emotionally. I mean, and how about Seth Johnson leading the fast break on that last bucket by the Tigers? And here's the thing: if you can't, if you can't get up for a, a, a national tournament, Omer no good. Bishop kept it alive and a foul on Omer. Not a good shot by Jake. That's the fourth team foul on Georgetown. IWU has committed five, and this crew of officials has done a really nice job. It's, they've let things kind of just 
dictate how they're going to call it. They haven't put the handcuffs on both teams to where they've called it so tight, neither team knew what to do. They're allowing this game to be physical. Well, they're allowing both teams to play. That's what you want as a fan. You want both teams, the 10 players that are on the floor at any one time, decide the game. Piercefield in trouble. Throws out deep. It's eight on the shot clock. Buchanan down the lane, two, and a foul on who? Is it Bishop or Brooks Harris? I'm going to say it's on Brooks. Harris. That's his second. He becomes the second Tiger with two. Five fouls on both teams here in the first half. The big one is Maxwell on the bench with three, the seven-footer. Buchanan's free throw is good. Boy, he's got a nice-looking stroke. He absolutely does. He looks more engaged tonight, and it's really difficult to understand why true freshmen, one night they don't look so in, you know, engaged, the next night they do. And Moses just part of the Red Sea. Yep, didn't work. Creative, I will say, the Georgetown football team for sure. Points for style. Yeah. 28-25, Tigers by three as we go under six. Spikes to Jones, working in the lane, between the two, laid it up and in. Oh my goodness. The spin move by Kyron Jones, right to the hoop. I think his knee's feeling better. We have told he was, was injured. Piercefield tried to get over to Atacuse, lost it. And they didn't see it. Stays with it. Good call. Stays with IWU. That was a good call. I, I thought uh, that was Omer that poked it away, went over the head of Atacuse. Timeout on the floor with 5.39 to play in the opening 20 minutes. It's been everything we thought it would be. Come back for more of the NEI National Tournament. Back here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym. On the campus of Georgetown College. And the sauna is cooking. And the sauna is cooking. You can ask my partner here to my right. I don't normally come out of my suit jacket, but it came off early tonight. 30 to 25 in what has been a very highly entertaining first half. Both teams have had their runs. And now we're settling into a, looks like a little bit more of a half court game over the last three or four minutes. Added to Kese, has it in the right corner, guarded by Jones. That is two strong guys right there. Smith straight away back in to Piercefield. Right block to Buchanan. Over Bishop, got a piece of it, rebounded by Jones. And the patient, the patience by Bishop, not falling for those pump fakes down low. Jones checks his dribble, gives back deep to Omer. Homer with Stauffer on him. Straight away to Kyron Jones. Jones, step back, 18-footer, got it. And you said it. If he's hitting that shot all night, they're going to be in for a long one. That's the shot that you, if you're IWU, they want Kyron Jones to take. He's hit two of them like that. 33-25, biggest lead of the night for the Tigers. And he's worked on that step-back mid-range game quite a bit. Piercefield. Cut off by Johnson. Now to Buchanan. Three over Jones. Right wing. Back rim. No. Ball tipped up. Bodies all over the floor. And Smith with his put back. He has six. Whole lot of physicality. You better bring your big boy game shoes on to get inside the lane tonight. Omer, deep three straight away. Back rim. No. Smith claims the rebound. Like Smith kind of will, or Omer was willing that one in. Didn't really release it. Piercefield to answer on the other end. Yes. 
Beautiful stroke. IWU. First points of the night for Piercefield, and it's 32-30, a 5-0 run to cut the lead to two. Spikes to Jones, a reverse layup good. Beautiful move in the paint. Spikes with the dish. 10 for Jones. Nice behind the back, and then a wrap around Piercefield to answer. Got it. Woo, he's on fire. Piercefield with back-to-back -back three point balls. And that one with not a lot of room to get it off. It's a one point game with three and a half to play in the opening 20. Jones out deep to Omer. Now to, Spar uh, to uh, Spikes. I don't know why all of a sudden I had a brain cramp there. Spikes down the right side, can't get through. Hooks it back out to Jones, bad pass. Stauffer will beat Jones to it. And a foul in the back. That's not a, a really nice play by Jones. Let him go, give up the easy basket. Now you're giving a man one. And they got the lead. Yep, 35-34 IWU. This has been uh, with Jaquay Wells who had probably about an eight minute break on the Georgetown bench. Spikes was giving them some great minutes, though, defensively, offensively. And well, the big question there. mark for me is, I guess we're not going to see Tay Dozier. Maybe not. Free throw on the way. No good from Stauffer. That looked bad off his hand. Omer turns into Adekese and a foul on Adekese. Omer fighting for his life. To Easiest that thing ball. for a player to do is to reach. But when you got Omer, Adekese, and I believe that was Smith, had him locked up in a trap, don't reach. He's killed his dribble. But every player across the country at every level, they can't fight the urge. They got to they gotta reach. You reach, I teach. Yep. Georgetown with the basketball and a foul on Piercefield. Didn't see it. I was watching the ball. This happened away from the ball here on the near side. I didn't see it. Piercefield saying Omer grabbed his arm. I couldn't see. I, I never. I was looking the other side of the floor. Happened away from the ball. Official talking with Piercefield. Piercefield evidently agreed with the Omer's free throw is good. That's the seventh foul on IWU. The first on Piercefield. And like you said, if you're the Tigers, this is who you want at the free throw line. Yes. I'm missing a foul somewhere on this. Omer hits both, and Georgetown seesaws back out in front. Seven for Omer. 36-35 Tigers. Here's Buchanan on the right wing. Back door to Adekuse, laid it in. And a breakdown defensively by Georgetown. No talking, uh, that's what gets defensive breakdowns, you don't talk. 37-36, IWU. Omer, down the left side, Adekuse, oh, they're gonna call a walk. Had the Kuse uh, reached in. I thought they were going to get him for the foul, but they said Omer walked. That's an untimely turnover for the Tigers there. They got to get a stop defensively if they want to turn this thing around. Now, I don't see Dozier on the Georgetown bench. I see him. In behind Coach Chris Briggs. Smith with two minutes, five seconds to play in the first half. Out of the Kuse, down the lane and a whistle and a foul. It is on Omer. That's his second. That one's a tough one on any defender. Out of the Kuse, looked like he was losing control of the basketball before the foul. Omer reached in. Out of the Kuse, they're going to say he was. Hit the first one anyway. They said he was in the act of shooting. And that shot touched every part of the rim before it went down. And they even hit the backboard. 38-36, IWU. Oh. 
Back rim, no. Omer claims the rebound. The rim not so friendly on the second shot. Two-point lead for IWU. A minute 55 left in the opening 20 minutes. Wells lobs, deflected by Buchanan. Bishop got a finger in the eye inadvertently. Here comes Cleaver. To Smith on the left wing. Drives on Johnson. Checks to Cleaver. To Buchanan. Working on Jones. In the lane. Back to Smith. Floater. No. Buchanan had it. And Wells was standing on the end line. IWU right now is doing a great job at attacking the boards on both ends. Smith. I'm not sure. Is Smith left-handed? I'm not sure. He was shot there with the right hand and didn't seem sure about it. Here's Adetokuse. Piercefield around Johnson. Down the lane. Right hand lip. Got it. Smooth. Slithery finish. Well, Jones got turned around on the help side defense. He couldn't help. Johnson, who was trying to stay in front of Piercefield. Piercefield proving he's more than just a shooter. Yep. 40-36, IWU. Jones on the right wing. To, K to Wells. Wells straight away to Johnson. Down the lane. Jones, three out of the right corner. Back rim, no. Buchanan grabs the rebound. And again, IWU will give that shot to him Again, all day. the wrong guy for Georgetown shooting the three. Smith down to Buchanan, missed it, got it back, and hit the basket. Looked like Buchanan bobbled the ball. That's why there was no walk. A six-point IWU lead. Both teams have had their run. This is actually the largest lead of the game for IWU. They led by five early on. Wells, if you're Georgetown, you got to get a shot. If you're going to do a three from Omer, here it is. Out of the corner for three. Got it. And they needed that one. Jake Omer with the fadeaway clutch. 42-39. Cleaver headed the other way. Floater. Got it. Unbelievable. Cleaver said he the buzzer. It. And he's going straight to the locker room. Yeah, and I'm not sure he got it off. The red light flashed about a half inch before. But I will tell you this. The NEI, they do not have instant replay so officials can go back and look at it till they get to Kansas City. 44-39 on the basket by Cleaver at the end of the first half. IWU on top by five. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with the 85th annual NAIA Men's National Basketball Tournament.
Have some people from IWU talking to us. And uh, Luke Imfeld, who is actually a freshman on this team. Here's three out of the corner for Lamont Good. That's the exact start that the Tigers need right now. Yeah, you're Drew Lamont five. out of the corner. And they got what they wanted, uh, a look for an open shooter. That's Lamont's first field goal. He spent most of the first half on the bench with three or two fouls. <clears throat> Great that's start to cut the lead to two. Yeah. And that's Chris Briggs' M.O. If you get two, you're going to sit. This is Smith. Maxwell's going to start the, on the bench here in the second half. He's got three, the seven-footer for IWU. This is Smith. To Piercefield. In the lane to Buchanan, a foul on Brooks Harris. That's three on CBH. He's the second player in the game to get three. The other we just mentioned, Seth Maxwell, the seven-footer for IWU. Buchanan at the line for two. Free throw is good. Talked about his stroke in the first half. He led IWU in scoring in the first half with 10. Smooth like butter. Yeah, he's a, got a really nice release. 46-42, IWU. This is Wales to Brooks Harris. Can't get free. To Jones on the left baseline. Omer, open look for three. Back rim, no. Ball tipped up by Lamont. Picked out there by Editor Kese. Ahead to Cleaver. Back now to Smith. Here's Piercefield looking at a three. Straight away, no. Rebounded by Jones. Piercefield, if he gets a look, he's like Jake Omer for Georgetown. You can pretty much bank on it. Here's a steal by Buchanan. Buchanan down the middle of the floor. Loses it. Cleaver had it, but Lamont gets it. Here's Omer ahead. Smith there with him. And a block. Omer went to the left. His left. Smith was there. Not sure that wasn't a charge. And they're going to talk with the IWU official. And it very well could have been. It looked like the defender had his feet set. Yeah, I don't know what was happening there. Fisher goes over to the IWU radio crew. Have no idea. First foul on Smith. First foul on IWU in the second half. Never see that happen. Omer hits the first free throw. My counterpart. On the radio side of things down here for IWU is in his 52nd year of calling Wildcat Athletics. How Interesting, huh? How about that? If only I can stay around for so long. 46 44. It's a two point lead for IWU. They have the basketball. A minute 45 into the second half. And a foul on Brooks Harris. That's four. And that's. That was a foul that you don't really need if you're Harris. Brooks and Harris. here comes Rashad Bishop as his replacement. Smith. And that's four on Brooks Harris. Into Piercefield. Now back to Smith. Cleaver. Straight away to add the case. Smith on the left wing. Cleaver straight away down the lane. Tries to get it out in the corner to add the case. And now all the Tigers run off and leave Lamont. And he finally gets it to Jones. Jones. On the dribble at 19. Back to Jones. Back to Lamont. Deep three. No. Rebounded by added to case. It's Lamont not a high-quality shot right there. Well, he got a look at it. Just couldn't get it to fall. This is Cleaver in the corner to Buchanan to Smith. Over here to Eddie Casey. Eddie Casey down the lane over Lamont. High, no good. Contact 
We play on. Omer has his pocket pick by Smith. Uh oh. And the Kuse with the jam. Folks that are wondering why when the technical foul for hanging, he didn't do a chin up. That's why. Right block to Jones. Backs his way in, can't get free. To Wales, down low to Lamont. Turn around, jump hook, good. Lamont wide open, that's good as money. That was a nice look by Wells too. 48-46, Maxwell up off the bench. To Cleaver. Pierce Field working around Wells. Cleaver, three. Left wing looks good. It, way too strong. Man, that looked really good. We had a nice look at that. I didn't think he shot it that hard, to be honest with you. Here's Lamont in the left corner. Back to Wells. Georgetown can tie or take the lead here. Wells, deep three. Left wing, good. Jaquay with the three ball. Georgetown on a one-point lead. Here's Buchanan driving baseline on Lamont. Puts it up over Lamont and the third foul on Drew Lamont. The Tigers get in foul trouble early. Lamont with three. Brooks Harris on the bench with four. Maxwell at the table for IWU with three. He's the only Wildcat in any kind of foul trouble. Buchanan at the line for two. First one is good. He has 13. As Maxwell's gonna come in for Buchanan. If you look for Georgetown, they may go right at Maxwell. Buchanan hits both. He has 14. We get a, is that a media timeout or a timeout Indiana Westland? Timeout Indiana Westland with 15.53 to play. It's IWU 50, Georgetown 49. This is the 85th Annual NAIA National Men's Basketball Tournament. Stay tuned. Back here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym, we got a good old good one brewing. We sure do. In the order words of, I think that would have been Keith Jackson. You're too young to remember who that is. Here is Jones working on Edicuse in the lane, back to Lamont. Lamont pulls it down in the corner. Bishop, 15 footer left baseline, short, short armed it. Rebounded by Piercefield. Good look by Jones. That's not Rashad's game, though. His is the high-flying trapeze artist type look. The acrobatics in the yep. lane. Here's Smith. 15 on the shot clock. Maxwell comes to high post. Gives to Piercefield. Now to Smith in the corner. He'll let three fly. Front rim, no. Jones out of position. Rebounded by Clearville. Or Cleaver, excuse me. <coughs> My voice decided he didn't want to work. Piercefield, floater, No. Long rebound in the hands of Bishop. Off to Omer. To Wells on the left side. He's guarded by Piercefield. Wells. Putting on a drill. Crossover. 
Didn't get him anywhere, though. Nice job by Piercefield. 13 to shoot. Lamont, 15-footer, got it. Lamont, money. Seven for Drew Lamont. Tigers back by one. Smith on the right wing. Anthony Cousse driving on Lamont. Good Ball away. Defense. Lamont with his hands straight up. Here's Jones, who checks the dribble. Now back to Wales. He has a mismatch with Piercefield. Jones in the corner. Here's three Lamont. No. That's the shot they want. Yeah, well, got, got a three point shooter. It just didn't go down. 51 50 Tigers. We go under 14 to play in the ball game. Folks, I don't think 40 minutes, the way this game's going, is going to be enough. Maxwell gives to Piercefield. Floater in the lane. Left it short. Lamont rebounds. Maxwell could have been called for four there, but they let him play through. I like the way this crew's doing. They're just getting letting enough go by where it doesn't affect the flow of the game. Three for Wells. No. That's not Jaquay's lay. They give it to Smith. Drives in on Lamont, laid it in. And a, a quick shot by a guy not known for his three-point shooting gives up an easy basket on the other end. Good drive there by Noah Smith to the lane. Eight for Smith. And Georgetown going to slow it down a little bit. Three players, two for IWU, one for Georgetown at the scores table to report in. Bishop over Maxwell, left it short, goes and keeps it alive. Here's it three on three to Smith, to Omer, and a blocking foul. And a little friendly fire in the air on the other end over here is what caused two Georgetown defenders to hit the floor. Foul on Omer is his third. He is the third Tiger in foul trouble now. Omer with three. Brooks Harris with four. Lamont with three. Maxwell's the only one with three. Smith, a line drive, somehow found the bottom of the net. Nine now for Smith. 53-51 as Mater makes his first appearance for Indiana Wesleyan, 25 in red, 6'5", redshirt sophomore, out of Tip City, Ohio. Tippecanoe High School. Always wanted to be saying that for the last two nights. Seth Johnson in for Georgetown. 6'3", sophomore out of Crestwood, Kentucky, South Oldham High School. Smith hits both, and it's a three-point lead for IWU. Wells will pick it up and bring it across the timeline. Gabrion Spikes in the game for Georgetown over in the far left-hand corner. Jones checks his dribble now to Johnson. Johnson down the lane, cut off. Gives it to Bishop in the lane, working on Maxwell. Eight on the shot clock to Johnson. Now to Spikes. And it's a turnover on Georgetown. And great defense by the Wildcats, forcing the turnover. I thought that ball might got it tipped, but. No, and Georgetown right now has nobody on the floor other than maybe Johnson that could be deemed a, li a viable threat from three. You're right. Cleaver. Across the timeline to Maxwell, driving, finger roll, no, got it back, lost it, got it back a third time, brought it down, Johnson knocks it away, on the floor and a Look held ball. Hustle by Seth Johnson. They go to floor. IWU on the alternating possession, but Johnson just flat, got on the floor after the loose ball. I love the hustle by Johnson there, bringing the intensity off the bench. That's what the Tigers are going to need. Say it's a 20-second shot clock. This is Maxwell. Bishop on him. Now to Smith. Smith backs it out. Maxwell in the lane. Turning on Bishop. Throws up a hard rock. Got it back. Put it up no good. Tell you what, he cleared some space with that left shoulder. Could have picked up his fourth foul, but Bishop did a nice job of staying right there. Timeout on the floor. It's a media timeout.
be right back. Welcome back to Davis Reed Alumni Gym. 11.48 to play. It's 54-51 Indiana Wesleyan over Georgetown. They will, the winner will either play Langston, we think, out of Oklahoma, and I do not know their opponent in Kansas City next week. So uh, a tough go for whoever, because Langston has been one of the top 10 teams pretty much all year. The seventh quarter at the line. Maxwell's free throw is no good. He has four points tonight. And he has not seen one fall in a long yeah, time. He got, he got a basket early and then got into foul trouble. Over two. The second one off the back rim. Bishop mistimed his jump. Stauffer then couldn't corral it and it went into the hands of Wells. So Georgetown with a chance to tie if they can get a triple here. To Jones. Jones working on Buchanan to Spikes in the lane, up over the seven footer off the Ooh. glass and good. Spikes splits the defenders and gets it off the glass to go. His first points, and it's a one point lead. Smith to Buchanan on the block to Maxwell, left hander, left it short. Maxwell's having a really tough time right now. Bishop's doing a pretty nice job of defending him. He gives up about six inches. Maxwell with the block. Spikes at 6 2 has got to understand you can't go weak inside against a seven footer. Got to take it in. When you have length, and Bishop, the way he jumps, creates a problem for IWU offensively, too. They go down low to Bishop, knocked out of bounds by Bishop. Bishop says, Get that out of here. And Bishop has played his backside off. He is exhausted because he's been battling down there with. Buchanan and with Maxwell. They inbound to Maxwell. Left baseline now to Smith. Spikes. Now Piercefield. Piercefield. Right wing. Three Buchanan. Got it. Beautiful shot. Buchanan's been knocking down threes all night. Four point lead for IWU. Ten and a half to go. Here's Wells. See how long. And I was going to say, see how long Coach Chris Briggs of Georgetown waits before he gets at least Omer back in. Here's Spikes. And a foul on Smith. That's one of those fouls. If you're a Wildcat fan, you go, why? You're behind him. Don't reach. Don't give a foul. It's only the second foul, though, on IWU here in the second half. That's Smith's second. And Spikes is going to stay on the floor. They love what he's doing defensively right now. Yeah, he is creating a major problem for Smith. They inbounds to Bishop, and Bishop looked like he got held. Over to Smith. Layup good. A missed call on a hold of Bishop on one end, a missed foul on the other end. And Smith got hit, I believe, by Johnson. Omer, back to Jones, three, got it. And Jones gets one to go. Kyron from downtown. First point to the second half for Jones. He's got 13. It's a three-point IWU Lee lead with nine and a half to go in the ball game. To Maxwell, working on Bishop. Turns, 
In and out, back in and around. Piercefield had it, lost it, rebounded by Bishop. Here's Omer. Omer. Back to Jones. Now it goes to Omer. Slips the screen with Bishop. Here's Omer. Dribbling off his backside. Piercefield ahead to Buchanan. Johnson stands there in a the foul. Oh, man, that looked like a block. It's like all ball, but I tell you what, that's one of those calls. They've been letting it go all night. If you go weak, the officials are saying, hey, we're not going to call it, but they light up Seth Johnson there, and at the line will be Buchanan for two. He has 17. Five above his average. He misses the first. Foul on Johnson was his first. That's six on Georgetown. And it turns out to be a good foul at that. He's not going to get two at least. We apologize for that. <laughs> Young fan. We understand. But uh, I made that same mistake as a young fan, too, around a radio crew. And my grandmother, who was at home listening, like uh, Griffin Cleaver's grandmother's listening in Marion, Indiana tonight, called me out on it when I got home. And she didn't wait till the next day. She called me that night at 11 o'clock and said, I want to speak to my grandson. <laughs> and guess what? I bet uh, you got a stern talking to. Uh, no, all I had to hear was her voice, and I knew what was going on. And if I could have dug a hole and crawled in it, I'd have done it. So, as a young fan, I get it. Over exuberant, I was that same way too. But we again, we apologize. Um, you never know what you're going to hear at the ball game from anybody. I don't care what age. Uh, but right now, both teams seem a little winded. So this timeout by IWU is going to give both teams a little respite because both teams have been going, I mean, I can't say 100 miles an hour because it hasn't been as fast-paced here in the second half as it was in half number one. But it has been, the second half has settled into a more physical half-court game. I mean, physical on both ends. If you cut across the lane, you're getting bumped, not by one, but by maybe two or three players. So it has been tough in the lane. You can at the line for another one. This one's back rim, no. Over two, ball don't lie. And unfortunately, Buchanan picks the Avila's a time where he misses both. Omer is on the bench. Up oh, there he is. Bishop is on the bench as Lamont's back in. Here's Wells. Lamont trying to post up. They look like they've gone to a zone. Here's Lamont. Pop with a three. Step in. 18-footer. Got it. Beautiful move by Drew Lamont. Gets his defender in the air and takes the wide open two. Well, Buchanan has seen that Lamont is a willing three-point shooter. Closed out. Unfortunately for him, Lamont put it on the floor. 59-58. Buchanan here. Backdoor cut, picked off by Johnson. Great read by Johnson. They were setting up the seven-footer for a backdoor cut on a slip screen. Johnson read it and picked it off. Jones, baseline, out to Lamont for the lead. In and out. Johnson had it, tried to tip it, and it looked like Cleaver may have gotten a hand on it to knock it out of his hand. 7.45, three for Piercefield. Good. That's... A five-point swing. Unbelievable shooting from Piercefield. That's his first field goal in the second half. Now he has 11, and it's a four-point IWU lead, 62-58. Here's Wales. Omer, three, looks left, is left. Rebounded by Cleaver, backside. Lost it, goes and gets it, now throws over here to Piercefield. Georgetown applying some pressure. That was not a good look for Omer. He was not squared. 
that I've seen, we've seen him hit shots this year like that. Buchanan for three, a big one. No. Good block out by Lamont of the seven footer. Here's Omer. Smith waiting on him. They give it to Johnson. To Wells. Under seven to play. 62 58 IWU. Wells to Jones. Goes around Maxwell in the corner. Lamont sets up three. No. Maxwell rebounds. Georgetown's had two looks at three. Can't get it to fall. They're getting the right looks. Eventually, one of those is going to fall. And timeout, Indiana Wesleyan. How much longer, if you're Chris Briggs, LC, do you think you wait with Brooks Harris? Not much longer. I think we've got to get him back in there. We desperately need, Georgetown desperately needs that defensive presence back on the floor. Well, Harris has eight, but he gives you that third three-point option if you have Lamont and Omer on the floor. Right now, they're closing down on Omer. They're finding Lamont. Lamont's had a couple of looks at three. No good. Uh, no, sh uh, Not falling for him. If you get Brooks Harris back in, that gives you that third option in a three-point shooter. On the meantime, if you're Georgetown, not many guys on the floor that you can pick uh, to let shoot because right now Piercefield, he's only got one field goal here in the second half. It was a big one to give this four point advantage. Uh, it was the first half though yep. that really showcased his shooting ability. Cleaver only has four, but he is a guy that is dangerous as well. And then Buchanan has proved that he can shoot the three. He's got a couple. He's got three tonight and 17 points. So, oh, should have been over and back. Like a yeah, missed backcourt violation. Yeah, because he caught the ball and then stepped over. No call. We play on. Here's Piercefield. Down the lane. Lost it. They say it's off his hands. Sixty-two fifty-eight. Six twenty-four to play. Georgetown. And Wales wants every second here. Yep. He's gonna use it. And IWU. And IWU lets him have it. Now the clock starts. 6.22 and the clock moving now. Wells looking down low for Jones. And Johnson's wide open in the corner right now. They give it to Jones. Maxwell on him. Jones pulls back 12. Left it short and a foul on Cleaver, I believe, on the rebound. And a big break for the Tigers. What looked like was going to be an empty possession is going to turn into... Another opportunity to put some points on the board. That was a block out by Cleaver, but I think what had happened at the time, he got him with a pretty clean block out. He just finished it a little too strong. Second foul on Cleaver. Third on the Wildcats. Johnson on the baseline. Lamont looking at it, three straight away. Got it. Drew Lamont finally gets it to fall. 12 now for Drew Lamont. It's a one-point game. 5.45 to play. It's been a heck of a basketball game, folks. Adam Tukasi. Stolen by Omer. Stolen by Omer. Johnson with it. Here's Lamont. To Wells. This has been a heck of a basketball game, and we're not, we're not done. Wells for the lead. Got it. Jaquay from downtown. And the Eight gymnasium for Wells. Wells. Timeout. IWU. Let him cook. 62-61. Wait a minute. It should be a three. What is it? 64-62? Yes. Georgetown has rallied from a five-point deficit to take a two-point lead with 5.16 to play. Folks, don't go anywhere. We got a timeout here. Here's what you do. You go to the bathroom. You go get you a drink. You refresh your drink. You get a nice tea. You get a water, a lemonade. Come back. Join us. 
Don't go anywhere because this thing is not done. And you're not going to want to miss what's no. going to happen next. It's a two-point Georgetown lead. It has been back and forth all night long. This, I will compare, and people say I do this too much, but I'm going to compare this to a heavyweight MMA fight. Both teams exchanging blows. Both teams giving their best shot. Both teams realizing that this could be their final game of the 2022-23 season. Both teams leaving it all out there on this gymnasium floor here at Georgetown. And guess what? They're playing like their season on the line. And it is. it is. Yep. One, hey, win or go home. That's what the, the national tournament's all about. And, folks, you will not find a better national tournament. I'll put it up against the D1. Here's Piercefield across the timeline to Editor Casey. Now to Cleaver. Now it goes to Piercefield. Gets a screen from Maxwell. Back over here to Cleaver. Looking down for Maxwell. They get it to him. The double team comes. Omer knocks it away. Omer's all over the passing lanes right now. Gets another steal in the clutch. Well, they brought the double team from the left elbow down to Maxwell. He saw it coming, but Omer anticipated the pass. Omer down the lane, hangs, puts it up left hand, no good. Johnson had it, it's knocked out of bounds by Smith. I'm sorry, that was Omer. TV, an immediate timeout, 4.37 to play. Folks, now you have 60 seconds. Go get those refreshments and be back on the 85th annual NAIA National Men's Basketball Tournament. Boy, I tell you what, thought we had two really good games last night, but I'm telling you what, this one, combined with the two games last night, you're not going to find three better basketball games anywhere in the country. And look at this, we got the wave yeah, going to the alumni gym. Got to go on red. Here we go. Back to action we come. Georgetown will have the ball underneath their own basket. Right baseline extended. Oh, here it comes, Darren. I'm not going to get I'll, I'll throw my hip out. <laughs> I am too old. Inbounds to Bishop. Gives out deep to Wells. Under 10 on the shot clock. Wells working on Pierce Field. Turns. Fall away. Got it. Unbelievable. Jaquay Wells does it again. You couldn't play any better defense than Pierce Field did. Wells just hit a very tough, contested shot. Piercefield with it. Driving hangs back out to Smith. Mobbles it, gives it down the lane over Omer. Answered. Tough layup right there. 14 now for Smith. 66 64. Under four to play. And I'm telling you, Wells' shot was. Contested and difficult. Smith was even more so. Both teams, boy, I'm telling you, they do not want to go home. Lamont fakes three-pointer. Got it. Oh, my goodness. Drew Lamont's on fire. 15 for Lamont all in this half. Smith over Lamont, good. And it's just an offensive clinic on both sides of the floor right now. 69-66, We are Georgetown. witnessing some truly great basketball. This thing's going to come down to the final seconds. This is two heavyweights exchanging blows. This is Apollo Creed, Rocky Balboa going at it in the middle of the ring. Wells 
to Lamont. Gets it back, eight to shoot. Seven on the shot clock. Wells to Johnson, three in front of the Georgetown bench. No, rebounded by Maxwell. That was a rush three against the shot clock. Smith across the timeline to Cleaver. Now to Piercefield, who lost it, got it back. Cleaver for the tight. Nope, down low to Piercefield, blocked from behind. Drew Lamont, by Lamont says no. Lamont cut. Piercefield never felt him. But a nice pass for Cleaver to set up his teammate. Lamont to Johnson. Now to Wells. I'm going to sleep good tonight when this thing does finally finish. Wells in the lane. Johnson, baseline. Tried to get it to Lamont. It's knocked out of bounds. Three on the shot clock. Poked away. It's going to stay with the Tigers. Timeout, Georgetown. They're going to set up something for three seconds on the shot clock. Tigers lead 69 66. It's a full timeout. You got another 60 seconds. If you didn't get your drink or your, another bag of popcorn or go to the restroom, do it now, folks. This is Georgetown College and IWU basketball in the men's NAI National Tournament. Tell you what, the fans here in Davis Reed Alumni Gym have been treated to a fantastic ball game between two really, really good ball clubs. Very well coached, and both teams are landing on the line. Three to shoot. Wells will inbound. He has a seven-footer on him to Lamont. He steps back three. Back rim, no. And the Kuse with the rebound. They got a good look on the three seconds. Here's Cleaver down the lane on Johnson. Got it. Unbelievable touch by Cleaver to get the bucket to go. Six for Cleaver. A minute 43 to play. IWU fans on their feet. Georgetown fans on their feet. Wells around Piercefield. In the corner, it goes to Lamont. And he throws it away. He overthrew Bishop. And that's not easy to do. Turnover, and here comes Cam Brooks Harris. An extremely untimely turnover for the Tigers. And Tigers got some really good minutes out of Seth Johnson. Sure did. Omer, Brooks Harris, Wales, Bishop, and Lamont. It's Maxwell, Adetokuse, Cleaver, Piercefield, and Smith on the floor for IWU. High post. Smith drives baseline, Brooks Harris. And we have a foul on Cam Brooks Harris and he's done. I tell you what, he played all of 10 seconds. I don't agree with the call, to be honest with you. It was a great shock and test. Well, both. Maxwell and Brooks Harris were going after the rebound and they were side by side. Nobody, neither player got an advantage. So I don't know. I mean, it's an official. That's a tough call. And, you know, if you make it on Maxwell, the IWU fans and, and faithful are going to be mad. If you make it on Brooks Harris, the Georgetown fans are going to be mad. That's a call. I don't know in this kind of game you, you call. That's what we call a lose lose situation. That's a tough, tough call. I'm glad I'm up here. <laughs> I would not want to wear the stripes. It has been a tough, tough game to officiate. Maxwell will be at the line for two. It is a one-point Georgetown lead. 
We have a minute 19 to play. Brooks Harris fouls out with only eight points, all of them in the first half. Oh, they're going to say Smith is shooting. I thought it was Maxwell. So Noah Smith oh, at the wow. line. Oh, wow. That's huge. A much better free throw shooter. Much better free throw, although Maxwell's not bad. But they're calling it. Uh, I thought it was Maxwell. Smith for two. We're tied. Nice. 17 for Smith, 11 in the second half. And the Wildcats have a one-point lead. Here come the Tigers, trailing by one, 70 to 69. A must-score situation right here. IWU in a man-to-man. Wells down the lane. Thought about shooting three. He has it to Jones on the baseline. Out of Omer. Omer, a fall away in the corner, no. Long rebound into the hands of Cleaver. This is Piercefield. Checks his dribble out high. In trouble. It's a five. Oh, a timeout. Timeout, IWU. 47.5 to go. One point game. This one's going to come down to the final shot. 47 and a half seconds to play. Indiana Wesleyan with the basketball and the lead. They are in the bonus. So the Georgetown foul, they'll go to the free throw line. Indiana Wesleyan has three fouls to give for Georgetown's anywhere near the bonus. So, and if you're Georgetown, I don't have, uh, I left my individual stats at home tonight in getting here. Of the guys on the floor before the timeout, if you're Georgetown, you don't want to foul Piercefield, Smith, or Cleaver. They're all excellent foul shooters, all in the mid to upper 70s. Maxwell would be your first choice. Especially at the because of the night that he's had at yeah. the line. He's 0 for 3. He would be one of the guys. The other guy that was on the floor before the end of the uh, before the timeout, it was is added to Kuse. He is a 54% foul shooter. I think Maxwell's somewhere in the neighborhood of 62, 63%. So if you have to foul in your Georgetown, there's 21 seconds on the shot clock. Now here's the thing. Even if you foul, it's a one possession game if they hit both free throws. So Seth Johnson back in replacing Cam Brooks Harris. Inbounds to Piercefield. Wells there with him. Added to Cousse. Down Maxwell to Piercefield. Down low to Maxwell. Missed the dunk, and he should have gotten fouled. No cow. Added to Cousse. Puts it in. I don't know how you don't call that foul. I think that was, is that Seth Johnson? Three-point IWU lead. Lamont. One second differential between game clock and shot clock. Omer, down the lane, puts it up, got it. Omer hangs, draws the contact, and puts it in. And here's a foul on Jake Omer with 11.9 to play. Omer went ahead and took the basket. That's four on Omer. But a moment ago, first off, I don't see how you call, don't call a foul on the drive by Maxwell. It led to an easy basket on the follow-up, but I don't know how you don't call a foul. That was, I mean, that is the definition of a foul. Timeout, Georgetown. We'll keep it right here. And with Indiana Wesleyan at the line, it could come down to some Omer magic. It could be. Um, he has hit a game winner this year. But, you know, I don't know how you don't call a foul on that one play because, number one, that was the definition of a foul. 
That was one. Two, that foul could have led to some really bad situations. You don't want to do that. You want to clear it up. And the referees are telling these guys to get out the way. Well, the Georgetown football team was coming behind the I, basket. Well, here's the thing. He made a big point. He just go over there and tell him. You don't have to blow the whistle to make a big deal out of it. Move them back to the other end. That's fine. But you got to. But what you got to do is just don't don't make a big production of it. I knew, I know the football team is trying to do that and all the stuff. That's fine. Move them just back to the other end. Noah Smith, who is 4-4 from the line tonight for two. Actually, one in a bonus. Some crucial free throws right here in Alumni Gym. Smith's first free throw is good. He'll draw the bonus. Either way, it is a one-possession game. If he misses this, if you're IWU, you may think about fouling. You got three plows to give. He hits both. both. Now Georgetown may go for a three. Here's Omer. He puts it up. No good. A reach in. Oh my goodness. They're going to give him three shots at the line. And I see who the foul was on. That almost gave Georgetown the lead. That's on Smith. And now it's all on Jake Omer. We've seen him do it before. Well, J- Jake tonight, Omer, five of six from the foul line. And no free throws are going to be more important than these in his career. 7.6 to play. First one is good. The first one is true. No pressure, right? None. 74 72. Second one's also good. Oh, baby. And timeout, IWU. What a basketball game we are witnessing. We have a parent that's upset with the the call, but I thought it was a good call. I mean, it got nothing to do with hometown or whatever. It just, that, that. Is a foul if you're IWU, you were trying to give it earlier. The problem was you gave it when he's going into shoot motion. Um, so that's where the problem arose there. Um, I under I love the strategy by IWU. They were gonna get up and get down the floor a little bit, use some time up. They waited a little too late to get the foul that they were gonna give. And if you notice, Jay Gomer took the exact shot where he hit the game winner. Yep. He hit a game winner earlier this year, about two and a half weeks ago. In the same spot on the floor. This one almost went as well and would have been a four-point play. But now he'll shoot for the tie here in a minute. Seven point six, so there's a lot of time still left on the clock. Possession arrow is Georgetown's. Omer for the tie. He has 16. In and out. Rebounded by Adam Cousse and then a foul on Omer. And Omer is done. But hope is not... Hope is not over just not yet. Not lost, because even if Attitude goes in and hits both free throws, it's still a one-possession game. So Omer is done. He becomes the second Tiger to foul out as Kyron Jones will come in. and Chris Briggs will call timeout. 
and it doesn't feel right, but one of these teams is going to go home, and their season is going to be over. It is a one plus one, by the way, for Adetokase. Six point, or six seconds exactly on the clock. It's 74-73, IWU. What a battle. Adekase will go to the line for one plus one. He has not been to the line. Yeah, he has. He's one of two. He has 10 points tonight. Adekase with the free throw. And it is loud. On its way. It's no good. Rebounded by Bishop. Ahead to Jones. Jones with a floater, no. Johnson in a foul. And oh my a foul goodness. on Cleaver. A foul on Cleaver on the block out. What a call. Let's by see the whether they're going to get the three officials. I don't know. The block out from Cleaver as Johnson went for the rebound. They got him underneath. Let's see what they've got. See what they've got. The foul is on Cleaver. And it's out of bounds underneath. It was a tip play that's usually a two-shot foul. One second left on the clock. I don't know how you can call a tip play. He said he didn't have control of it is what the official's saying. Timeout, Georgetown. And Coach Briggs right now is giving the referees an earful as he should. Well, here's what I don't understand. I have seen that very same play called, and I'm trying to explain to our viewers at home. I have seen that play called a thousand times in my career. If you tipped it up and it goes in, you get a name one. I would love to hear what the conversation was with the three officials there to find out. I really don't understand well, let, let's talk about the, judgment there. the decision by Kyron Jones. Was he going for the lob? I think he was going for a floater. He had more time on the clock than he thought. Uh, a really good job by Maxwell, though, the big seven-footer, to not commit and give Jones a clear path to the basket. One second to play. 74-73. It's a shame that one of these two teams goes home tonight. It is. Both these teams can make some noise when they get to Kansas City. And they both played a great ball game tonight. Yeah. Two players have fouled out for Georgetown. Lamont has been playing the whole second half with three. Maxwell as well. Smith has three. One second remaining. Here's the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Lamont will inbound. Down low to Jones, lost it, and a foul. foul. A foul is called. A foul is called again. And that was on Seth, I think that was on Seth Maxwell. He reached in just as the shot was going up. And Jones will shoot two. Can you believe this? And again... Maxwell with the foul, his fourth. But it may not matter. Kyron Jones at the line for two. He has 13. Ten of them, though, came in the first half. Jones hits the first. Kyron Jones ice cold at the line. Unbelievable. This is the real big one. For the win. 
Got them both. Kyron Jones, back-to-back -back daggers. Piercefield lets it fly. And that's going to be it. Tigers win. Georgetown Tigers win. is headed to Kansas City, and it is a doggone shame that IWU is going home. Neither one of these teams deserve to go home, LC. What a ball game. Neither team. It is a heartbreak for IWU. And LC, I'm telling you, truthfully, neither team deserves to go home. This bracket, when they were introduced, Chris Briggs told me yesterday, this bracket was probably the most even balanced bracket in all of Kansas City. And I tell you what, an unbelievable comeback. I tell you, take your hat off to IWU. This was a game where it absolutely, you didn't want to see at the end. You didn't want to see at the end. The confetti's falling and the Tigers are going to Kansas City. But again, you didn't want, this, the, nobody in the stands here wanted this game to end tonight. I was rooting for overtime. We could have gone to overtime. I'd have been happy for three overtimes because these two teams left everything they had. Now, folks, if you were watching at home, I don't care if you were in Marion, Indiana, if you were here in Georgetown, or anywhere in between, if you didn't enjoy this high school basketball game, then guess what? You are not human. Because if you did, if you did, you would absolutely have no heart. No heart. Because these two ball clubs played exactly. I said it before in the pregame. This game, before when we walked into the lobby here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym, this game had a final four or a fab four, as you call it at the NAI level, a fab four feel and it delivered on every level, every level. I mean, what else can you say? A fantastic game. Unfortunately, it ends the way it did with a call right at the end. I couldn't tell. There was too many bodies between us and what happened down there. The guy that was closest was the official who made that call. I would not want to be him would not want to be him. However, tip your hats to both teams. You have to. What, a, what an outstanding, tremendous basketball game. I mean, one for the ages. Believe it or not, people are not going to, people who know me, and you've only known me now for a year, <laughs> nobody is going to believe when I say I'm at a loss for words. I really am. IWU, one of the, the, the top teams for a number of years, three NAI Division II national championships under their history. Georgetown with three national championships in the Division I. Really a unbelievable finish to this ball game. However, again, IWU, nothing to be ashamed. And honestly, a big standing ovation to Drew Lamont. The way that he played tonight was just outstanding. His ability to stretch the floor. A heck of a game tonight between these two ball clubs. It has been, I tell you, I'm glad I got six days between tonight and my next broadcast because my voice is going to be gone. I'll give you the final stats. We'll take a break. We'll be back in 30. This has been... The NAI National Men's Basketball Championship Tournament from Georgetown back in 30. Two, you were 0 for 2, yeah. Two. Um, I just had to take my time, man. Uh, <laughs> at halftime, I just knew I had to shoot some free throws, and I was missing them even then. And uh, I just listened to Coach Woody talking about taking a deep breath. He said, you got it. I was like, hey, okay. man, I mean, I got a team on my back right now. I mean, I got, like, everybody believes in me. Like, nobody was no bad energy. 
Everybody believed in me. I mean, I appreciate my teammates, the coaches, man. I mean, there's a lot of pressure, though, for sure. Well, I will tell you but, this. You and I have talked about this. I told you you have a little hitch in your, in your shot <laughs> when you get to the top. There was no hitch on either one of those. You went straight through with it. So maybe you need that kind of pressure on you all the time to shoot free throws. Yeah, man. Hold I'll on. praise the God, man. <laughs> Thank God. Kyron, I appreciate it, buddy. Good Thank luck you. in Kansas City. Unfortunately, I will not be able to make it with you. You're not you. coming? Brother, I have a new job. My Man. real job, as everybody would say. This is my fun job. Oh, okay. But I have a real job, and I've only been there about six months, and I I haven't built up enough time to take a week off. Okay. Okay. Y'all was nervous? Y'all was nervous? Yeah. Was I nervous? nervous? <laughs> I was a little nervous, but I'll tell you this. I'll make you this. You'll be back for next year. We go next year, I'll be in Kansas City with you. How All about right, that? Deal, deal, deal. Hey, don't forget this either. I won't forget it. That's Kyron Jones, not Chris Coffey. He did sound like Chris Coffey a little bit there. That was a heck of a game. Kyron finishes with 15 points, three Tigers in double figures, led by Jake Omer with 16, 15 each for Kyron Jones and for Drew Lamont. All of Drew Lamont's 15 came in the second half of play. That's what you want from your senior. You want your senior to step up and give you what he did in the second half, and Drew Lamont did that when the Tigers were almost dead in the water. And here comes the man of the hour. Here comes Chris Briggs. Coach, you can just stand right there if you want. Now I'm gonna sit down because I feel like I played. There you go. <laughs> Me. Heck of a game. And no I, I, I told our listeners and our viewers online before this game started, I walked in the lobby of Davis Reed Alumni Gym. There were a few people in here, but I felt the energy from the two teams as soon as I walked in. And I no said, doubt. this has a Fab Four feel to it already. No doubt. I mean, you know, they're a great team. They've been top 10 all year or top 15, whatnot. And, you know, I think they had a couple unfortunate injuries there and lost a couple guys, got them back. So, um, you know, no doubt they're a fantastic team. You know, we were very fortunate to come away with, with the win right there. Um, you know, luckily, you know, Kai steps up and knocks down the free throws. I thought Seth should have been shooting free throws after that, but he didn't know well. I did but, too. But, you know, it's part of it. It's a, it's a game of runs, and every possession matters. Every play matters. Every, every defensive stop matters. You know, and, uh, you know, got a value the ball. We threw it away a little bit. I thought we definitely could have played better, especially in the first half. Um, but, you know, we, we lost Tay Dozier and didn't have him in there. And, Kyron's been battling knee injuries, and I know everybody has knee injuries this time of year. It is what it is. Everybody's fighting through it. So just, just happy for these guys. We're dealing with everything they dealt with here and, and uh, you know, being, being, being fortunate enough to come out with the win. Thing is, too, Coach, I also said this, too, not only had the Fab Four feeling when I walked in the building, this also, I said, could be a matchup. It was a, really a bad matchup for both clubs that got, I thought, underseated. To yeah, be honest no with doubt. you, no you know, and IWU, I think because they're a former Division II team of the NEI, when they combined it into one, I think not a lot of people knew about them. Uh, yeah, I but mean, they, they have. They They've been winning Division II national Yeah, but they have three. They have three. But I mean, I'm just talking about yeah. it as far as the overall seeding was they, concerned. They lost a couple games because they had guys out and hurt. You know, that happens during yep. the season. And, and, you know, they go by these NAI power ratings and strength of schedule. And, you know, there's teams in a. In, you know, certain conferences that we know are not as strong as the Mid-South Conference that have a tougher strength of schedule than we do. So riddle me that, you know, that, that, right. that, that just needs to get fixed or else you're going to have situations like, like this. Like tonight, yeah. Yeah, but it creates the, you know, the six versus three when, you know, really it's a two versus two, you know. I mean, yeah, or even even depending on how the year goes, a one versus a one. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You got to play right. the game. You got to beat everybody. and Or you, not everybody, but you got to beat somebody good every time. You got to go through so, somebody, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you can sit there and complain about how they do it and how they how they put people and where they put them and who you play, but at the end of the day, you got to go play the game and you got to try to win the game. So Yeah, this quad of, of the Dewar bracket is absolutely – I mean, Mid-American Nazarene, Lords, Lords was yeah. a team that – Good grief! How they wind up a 14 seed? You know, I mean, that was a that was a, a, a tough bracket nah, too. But you guys played uh, tonight in an atmosphere that will get you ready for that run in Kansas City uh, to get back to a national championship right. contest. Uh, yeah, you know, you had three guys in double figures tonight, led by Jake Omer, who had a chance to tie it, uncharacteristically missed a free throw. Right. Uh, however, let's give one of your other seniors no a pat on the back, Drew Lamont. No scoreless in the first half because he was dealing with Seth Maxwell, right. three fouls. Uh, 
and he's, 15 he's, points he's all in the be, second half. He's got to be smarter than that, you know, to start the game and, yeah. you know, a couple cheap ones. And I like I like his intensity. I like his focus. But he just, he's got to be smarter than that to pick up those two quick ones because that was a matchup that I thought he could have really exploited. And, you know, he missed a three there, maybe six minutes left in the huddle. He's up, he's down and upset. He missed the three. And I, you know, looked at him and said, said, Drew, the next one's going in. Next one's going in. Sure enough, he jumped up and stroked it, uh, you know. I mean, it's March. You got to survive in advance. You got to, you got, you know, this, this happens. You know, you, you don't play your best game and you, you come out on top. So you got to move on and trying to figure out a way to put, you know, at least 37, 38, 39 minutes together, 40 minutes together. Obviously, you know, last night we played a great first half and a terrible second half. Right. You know, tonight we, we had, we threw the ball over the gym for a little bit. We, you know, we, we haven't really played our best basketball yet, you know, but we've got a revolving door lineups with losing Tay last night and, you know, different guys having to step up. I thought Seth Johnson came in and filled Tay's spot great. You know, had some good minutes and played hard, played tough. And, and uh, you know, that, that's what that's all you can ask your team is, you know, somebody goes down, other guys step up and fight to the end. You know, easily could have hung their head, gave up, you know, but, we t you know, we rebounded the ball, took off with it, got to the rack. You know, Seth trying to tip it in, you know, and then, and then run out of, under out of bounds play and listen in the huddle and execute. We had three different options right there. They hit a perfect one and, you know, I know people don't like fouls called at the end of the game, but if you don't want them called at the end of the game, don't foul, you know. So uh, Kyron stepped up and knocked the free throw down, and, uh, you know, fortunate for us we're moving on, and, and we know that we've got to play better and, and be better, you know, down the road once we get to Kansas City if we want to keep on having a chance to go at it. Well, I will tell you this, uh, and, and you'll get a kind of a joke out of this with Kyron. Kyron came up here and said, uh, you know, I realize I am a questionable free throw shooter, but I tell you what, he didn't look like that when he stepped up. There with point four, both shots right. hit nothing but the bottom of the of the sack, and uh, you know he he uh, do what he had to do. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's something we talk about in life all yeah. the time. Everything, I mean, it's all uh, mental, it's all, all mental, mental, yep. mental toughness, mental toughness. You know, focus, mental toughness, and and he had it, and uh, stepped up, knocked him down, and you know, fortunate for for the whole community of Georgetown. Here we go again, riding out there. So yeah, well, I unfortunately. It was my new job. I can't be there with you, but I will be there in spirit, and I will be listening the whole time. Uh, and doggone it, if you get to the national championship game, I may feel a sick day coming on. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> one at a time, baby, one at a time. So. Coach Chris Briggs, congratulations. Appreciate Go Appreciate home, it. get some rest, because I know I may, I'm going to pray I don't fall asleep in the car Appreciate on the way home. Look at, I'm Kyle, exhausted. look at Kyle limping to the locker room. Yeah, Love yeah. it. Love it. Those Appreciate are the kind guys. of guys. Thank yep. you, Chris. Chris Briggs, the Georgetown head coach, and it has been – a dandy of a night here in Georgetown on Davis Reed Alumni Gym. It, LC, I don't know if I can do it any more justice. It was a classic. It sure was. It sure was. It was a classic. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for bringing us into your home, no matter where you were across this great land of ours, the United States of America. I will tell you this. I'm not going to be patriotic, but I'm going to tell you this. There's nothing greater than athletic competition and I will put the NAIA national tournament against any other tournament NBA or otherwise this is why you play the game of basketball IWU Indiana Wesleyan the Wildcats you have nothing to be ashamed of you came in you played your game you played it your heart out you entertained me for two nights I'm a pretty tough guy to please but I enjoyed your way you played the game and I'm heartbroken that either one of these teams had to go home tonight. I loved my time knowing, getting to know a lot of the fans from, from Indiana and Wesleyan. Thank you for bringing us into your home. And again, the final score for the final time, for the final time this year from Davis Reed Alumni Gym was Georgetown, 75, and Indiana and Wesleyan, 74. Good luck, Tigers, in Kansas City next week. That's a wrap. This has been L.C. Newton. And Darren Douglas, this has been the 85th Annual Men's NAI National Championship Basketball Tournament. We'll so see. long, everybody. We'll see you next year.